The session title is Fast OVA State Bus with XTP. I'm Toshia Kimakita from NTT, and the co author is William Tu from VMware. This is outline. We first explain what is XTP and AFXTP. Next, we introduce OVS AFXTP native. The main contents are first OVS state path. We have two approaches. Uh, one is approach A, XTP flow, and the other is approach B, OVS XTP flow API provider. Then performance, challenges, and summary followed. Okay, so first I explain what is XTP. Uh, XTP is short for Express Data Path. It's an in kernel fast data path. It allows users to attach eBPF program to NIC driver. The eBPF program runs immediately after the driver receives packets and it can modify packets or determine how to handle the packets. For example, it can drop packets by XTP drop action or send packets back by XTPTX or pass packets to the upper layer traditional network stack by XTP pass or forward packets by XTP redirect. The characteristics of XTP are fast, it's fast with minimum overhead and flexible. It has high programmability thanks to eBPF and integration with existing kernel network stack because it has XTP pass action. But one of the problems is it's hard to use mainly because of eBPF verifier. eBPF has verifier. It checks if the eBPF program is safe or not. And if it determines the program is not safe, loading of eBPF program will fail with error. The verifier is very strict. So in many cases, eBPF programmer needs to be very familiar with eBPF. This can discourage people to use XDP. So what we are thinking is, if someone prepared typical XDP network functions, it would help users. In other words, let's accelerate existing features by XDP, like virtual switch, routing, firewall, traffic control. And now we are focusing on virtual switches, especially the de facto standard virtual switch, open switch. <clears throat> okay, uh, so Linux AFXDP actually is uh, <clears throat> another way of using XDP. So it's a new socket type that enable receiving and sending raw friends with a very high speed close, close to the line rail of the <coughs> NIC car. So the idea is that users can uh, inject or inject an XDP program at the driver layer like showing on the right hand side. So the XDP layer can decide whether this package should continue going into the Linux kernel stack or bypass the kernel and send the packet to the AFXDP socket. So with the driver supporting zero copy and enabling DMA buffer directly from the driver to the user space AFXDP socket buffer, uh, this shows a very good performance. Uh, next slide. So since OVS uh, 2.12, uh, we uh, integrate the idea of AFXDP into the OVS. So the idea is that <clears throat> for OVS, we can use AFXDP socket as a fast channel 
uh, to bypass the kernel. So very similar to the idea of DPDK, but instead of using DPDK library to send and receive packet, we are using AFXDP here. And once the OVS user space receives the packet, the rest of the packet processing, like parsing the packet, uh, look up the different tables and applying action. So the code is, is the same as uh, used by the OVS DPDK. So it's sharing the same user space data pass implementation. It's just the packet IO library is different than uh, the DPDK one. However, the current implementation of OVS, we inject only a minimum uh, XDP program, which uh, forwards all the packet from the XDP to the user space. So we didn't do anything in the uh, XDP context. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so, uh, when, when we are measuring the performance using uh, virtual machine and container, we actually found that for the virtual machine use case, because it's running in user space like QEMU process, right? So we can get pretty good performance. However, for the container use case, because typical containers require using the um, kernel device, for example, vSpare device. So when using OVS with AFXDP, the packet actually been forwarded by XDP to the user space and then inject into the kernel again and to the uh, VE drive and then send it to the container traffic. <clears throat> so this shows a little bit lower performance than we expect. So in this work, uh, we are going to uh, introduce like XDP, we are going to enable XDP to do more processing in the kernel. So basically steering the packet in the XDP context and uh, we implement the uh, flow processing, like parse the packet lookup and action in the, inside the XDP so that we can avoid this uh, copy from kernel to user space and user space back to the kernel, uh, the problem. Next. So this is our main contents, first obvious data pass approaches. We propose two approaches. Approach A is XDP flow. This is an in-kernel solution. And approach B is obvious XDP flow API provider. This is an in-user space solution. So first, let me explain approach A, XDP flow. XDP flow is a generic flow offload engine to XDP in kernel. So why are doing that in kernel? Actually, there are multiple network functions which are doing similar flow handling, OVS, TC flow, and NF tables. So the idea is to create a generic XDP flow offload engine in kernel so that we can offload all of similar flow features with the same mechanism. Those features are using existing generic flow hardware flow framework in kernel, so we make use of this framework. Always is not directly offloaded by this framework, but can be offloaded through TC flow or hardware offload. So, before going into the details of XDP flow, I'll explain how existing OVS hardware flow is done. The diagram shows how OVS handles packets without hardware flow. When the NIC receives packets, when the NIC receives packets, they are handled in the fast pass. Uh, called data path in kernel or in user space. The data path handles packets based on flow tables in it, but if data path misses an appropriate entry in flow tables, it passes packets to the upper layer flow path. This is called upcall. Then the slow path installs flows into data path flow tables. Uh, 
And with TC hardware flow of OBS, the slow pass installs flows into TC flow at the same time when it installs flows into data pass. And then TC flow installs flows uh, into hardware NIX. This way, OBS flows can be uploaded to hardware NIX through TC flow. And this is more detailed diagram of TC flow hardware flow. TC flow actually uses the generic flow offload infrastructure in kernel. This is shared with NF tables. And the flow offload infrastructure uses callbacks in flow offload driver for each NIC in order to do the real offloading tasks. Okay, so let's return to XAP flow. Uh, XAP flow is a flow flow driver in kernel. You can see that this NIC, NIC flow flow driver is replaced with XAP flow. It installs flows into XAP instead of hardware NICs. OBS is offloaded by XAP flow through TC flow offload. Also, with this mechanism, NF tables can be offloaded to XAP as well, because XAP flow uses the generic flow offload infrastructure shared with NF tables. And this is more detailed XAP flow control plane. XAP flow actually needs a user space program to attach an XAP program because XAP programs cannot be attached from kernel context. So XAP flow uses user mode helper embedded in XAP flow kernel module. XAP flow launches the embedded user mode helper, a daemon program called XAP flow UMH. And the UMH does any BP, BPF operations. Flow tables for the XAP program are eBPF maps, and the map manipulation is also done by UMH. In this model, the XAP program used by XAP flow is also embedded in UMH. This shows data plane of XAP flow. With XAP flow's XAP program attached, most received packets are handled in XAP context. If the XAP program misses an appropriate flow table entry in this flow table, the received packet is passed to OVS data path in kernel. And data path handles packets as normal. So pros and cons. The advantages of XAP flow is that it can share codes with multiple functions, OVS, TC, and NF tables. It also has transparent UI. Users can use existing commands like OVS or CTL. And the UI to enable the feature is also simple. We can just use east2-k to enable XDP flow. But the drawback is the complexity due to indirection layers like UMH. You can see uh, there are many indirection layers in the diagram. And another problem is that the XTP program is embedded and cannot be modified. So 
users cannot customize XJP programs for their use cases, and there's no integration with AFXJP native of OBS. So XJP flow is not necessarily the best solution. I posted XJP flow RFC in native community mailing list and got some alternative approaches. The first one is to create a new user space demo for TC flow, XDP flow. It snoops TC netlink events and does EBF operations based on the events. The problem of this solution is that TC emulation from user space is difficult because TC flow is changing frequently. And the second one is to create an eBPF helper function in kernel to access flow tables of obvious kernel module from XDP programs. But it's hard to refactor obvious module to expose the API. And also this does not work with obvious AF XDP user space data path. The last one is to handle eBPF tasks in obvious user space demo. This is our approach B. Approach B is obvious XDP flow API provider. It's essentially user space implementation of XDP flow approach A. It uses offload mechanism in obvious VCHD. So its solution specific to OBS, but it can work with AFXTP native. Actually, with this approach, administrators can adapt any XTP programs as long as the program uses AFXTP. This means the program can be minimal for each use case, which has minimal overhead. At the same time, we provide a reference program for XJP flow offload in the OBS source tree. And with that, users can easily use the feature. As I have talked, OBS has offload mechanism through TC flow. The offload mechanism in OBS is actually called Flow API. And there is another Flow API called RT Flow, which is used by DPDK. So currently, there are two Flow APIs in OBS. And our approach P adds one more Flow API, XDP. Uh, currently, approach B can be used only with AFXTP native. So this diagram shows OBS with user space data path using AFXTP native without our approach B. The XTP program is attached by AFXTP native and it just passes all packets to data path through AFXTP socket. And with our approach B, when the slow pass installs the flows into data path, XDP flow API provider installs the flows into eBPF maps for the XDP program. So XDP flow API provider plays the role of UMH in approach A. In approach A, there were many indirection layers, but in approach B, the OBS slow path directly does EBPF tasks. So it's very simple. Like this. And note that uh, users can use arbitrary XJP program here. 
And as I said, we provide a reference XDP program that works as a caching layer of user space data path. But users can customize this program. For example, they can remove unneeded flow keys or action handling in the program. With approach B, if the XDP program is our reference program or a similar one, most packets are handled in XDP context. If the XDP program misses a flow table entry in XDP eBPF maps, the packet is passed to user space data path through the AF XDP socket. And here's comparison between each flow the flow API. XDP flow API provider has driver level performance. Its flexibility is high, as users can attach any XDP program. System requirement is Linux kernel eBPF XDP feature support. Tunnel and contract are not yet supported. Okay. We measure the performance of approach B forwarding throughput. We use the packet gen and the traffic is one flow UDP stream. The sending rate is about 37 megapps, which is 25 gigabit Ethernet wire rate. We have done two kinds of tests. One is I-42 bit. We count packets successfully forwarded from I-40 to this device. And the other is I-40 to I-40, count packets successfully forwarded from I-40 to I-40. And this is the results. The green one is open visage kernel module, the baseline. The blue one is FXDP native. And the orange one is our approach B, XDP flow API provider. You can see that in both tests, our approach improves forwarding throughput. The performance number is about 3.5 to 3.7 megapps per core. Here we use per core for the unit because AFXDP uses two cores for one flow. So AFXDP result is divided by two. And note that in I-40 to V test, the AFXDP performance is lower than kernel because this does not support zero copy feature of AFXDP. In that case, AFXDP needs to copy from copy packets from kernel to user space and vice versa. So XDP Flow API provider has more advantages with container traffic, which often uses these devices. And we have a couple of challenges. First, more keys and action support. Country we support only very basic keys and actions. In the future, more keys and actions like tunneling should be supported. And second, further performance improvement. Actually, I have tested an experimented patch in XDP Flow RFC, and it showed 5.2 megapps score. So there's room to improve the performance. The last one is how to offload. XDP itself has a feature for how to offload, but our reference program cannot be offloaded at this point. One of the reasons is mapping map EBP feature. We use mapping map, but XDP how to offload does not support mapping map. So 
summary. We proposed OVS performance acceleration by XDP. We have two approaches. Approach A, XDP flow is in kernel solution. And approach B, OVS XDP flow API provider is in user space solution. Approach B works with OVS AF XDP netdev. And we are now working on this approach B. The forwarding throughput of approach B achieved about 3.5 to 3.7 megaPPS per core. With our, pro with our approach, users can easily use XDP accelerated virtual switch, fast and highly flexible OVS. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you. So we do have a few questions, um, but uh, I wanted to start off with um, performance. So it seems like the, the re reason to do this is mostly for performance, um, specifically the, the normal kernel OVS module, um, we think we can do better. Is, is that the primary motivation here? So, sorry, so what, what's the question? Uh, is, is performance the primary motivation for this work? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's assume that, that the uh, primary motivation is performance. And I wanted to tie this into a discussion that we had around smart NICs. And I think um, it was either Andy or Orr mentioned something interesting. So one of the value propositions of smart NICs is that we can offload host CPU cycles into the smart NIC. And one of the side comments was something to the effect that OVS right now can take up to six Xeon cores uh, in the host CPU to do its work. And that's like 25 million packets per second or something like that. So the obvious question I have here is, would, would this implementation improve that so we can reduce the, the number of host cores that we're burning for OVS? Uh, yes, so let me try to answer this question. So <clears throat> yes, we understand that when we are running OVS, either uh, when we are using OVS DPDK or OVS kernel or using this uh, OVS XDP. So OVS indeed to to hit line ray or we use a lot of CPU cycle. And uh, one solution is of course to use uh, SmartNIC or to offload the traffic into the uh, hardware ASIC or accelerators. So we'll get the best performance when we can offload the hardware. However, some cases, for some cases, like we are doing pretty, OVS is doing pretty complicated pipeline, like connection tracking or different tunnel setups. Uh, it might not be able to offload into the hardware or smart NIC. So that's why we are thinking about a better solution. So one solution is of, of course to use uh, DPDK. And another solution here is to uh, use the uh, XDP work here. So which will provide better performance, but of course slower than the hardware of low, but should be much better than uh, the kernel they have has. So, I, so I, I would say that the goal is of course performance or uh, performance efficiency, like using less corns to get better performance uh, using the idea of XDP. I also assume there's an ease of use issue uh, that's probably applicable. So uh, doing something in the host on in user space uh, as opposed to getting that in smart, it's probably easier to use. Uh, so the next question uh, from Shijit, the two schemes ignore hardware offload hardware that can do flow queue steering, uh, TC hardware and the QX to XDP, the AF XDP could be an option, no? Uh, yes, so so I think it's a it's a good idea. So, but but right now for the uh, approach B that uh, we, are t we are proposing, probably we are not using the this idea. So 
right now in the case of OVS, it's either you choose the way to do TC flower or flow, or you choose the another one, you choose this one to use XDP or flow. So the idea 3G proposes is to um, put the TC highway of flow at button, and then if the, it doesn't work, fall back to the XDP one. So we haven't implemented this way, but I think it's also a good idea. What operations can be offloaded to the XDP? Uh, yeah, so I think in the last slide, uh, we mentioned that they are still, so the XDP program right now is still pretty, uh, basic, actually we have a lot of stuff, but, but for example, like connection tracking or the tunnel, we haven't implemented in XDP, but basic packet parsing and then table lookup and then uh, actions are, are, there, are there in our current uh, patch, patch set. Yeah. But, but the idea is we are hoping that uh, with this framework there, um, we can, we hope people can, contribute their XDP call, we can incrementally add more features uh, in the XDP call to support like different actions. So I think that also folds into the next class of questions. So when we add um, BPF helpers, the preference would be that they're not application specific, not OVS specific. So for yeah. instance, we could have a generic TC flower uh, BPF helper. And I think that model could be extended if, if we can break down like all of the uh, features that something like vSwitch needs, then those might define the sort of helpers or accelerations uh, within that. So I think that was answered reasonably on the chat. Uh, yes. Uh, so what is yes, performance it's... with OVS, DPDK and RTE flow? I guess it's a, what's a comparison to those? So, sorry, I didn't compare the performance. Uh, comparison of this solution to DPDK and RTE flow. Yeah, probably DPDK is faster, but uh, the, the XDP is more flexible. And so, for example, DPDK uh, need to assign uh, memories and CPUs, so the characteristics, characteristics is different from XDP. So we we don't need, uh, we shouldn't just compare the performance of them, I think. Uh, so uh, yeah, so let me add some comments. So <clears throat> we didn't do the comparison, but our performance should be better than, uh, should be better than, if we consider container, uh, like in kernel processing, then our performance should be better than OVS DPDK. So imagine you have a container using kernel VE's uh, driver, right? So if you are using DPDK, then, then the problem is you send a packet to user space uh, OVS DPDK, then you pump the packet back into the kernel, inject into the VE's uh, driver, and then container get the packet. While in while this world, we don't need to traverse to the user space, right? So uh, the XDB program will directly forward from the um, XDB friend and to the inject into the VEs. So uh, yeah, so we didn't do a performance comparison, but uh, we expect it should be better. Okay, so I guess what we're saying here is um, the performance different difference isn't necessarily a showstopper. And there are some other advantages of, of using XDP in the kernel data path uh, in terms of, of flexibility. Uh, so that's always good input to the community, right? So um, clearly DPDK uh, was in a sense a motivation for us to spin up XDP. So uh, we're always looking for, you know, to validate that we're on the right path and that, uh, you know, obviously we wanna get every ounce of performance, but at some level, DPTK would, would inherently be faster, but for real applications, for real use cases, um, which were targeted in the end of the day, as opposed to some synth synthetic benchmarks, that's where you know, we, we definitely need that input from um, operators and MMN or assist. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah, yes, no problem. So, so uh, one thing that, so 
So we also did measurement using the uh, virtual machine, right? So in the case of virtual machine, then obvious DPDK will be faster because QEMU runs in user space. And if you apply like uh, vhost user protocol for the virtual port, then you get the performance uh, right now. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. So there was another, I guess a little bit of a side discussion on TC Flower. And that might be one to uh, maybe defer to happy hour or a side talk, but I think it's really an important topic. Um, as Jamel points out, uh, we're putting a lot of stuff on it. And I think it's another case where we, we invented something that's useful and very quickly it becomes a victim, victim of its own success because we just want to keep dumping on it. Uh, so it might be interesting to figure out how to do that. And then uh, TC Flower offload, um, how do we keep that in sync with, with uh, host software? So uh, let's defer on that. I think that um, maybe we can bring that up in happy hour. Uh, okay. Okay, so Taurus, I hope we get the name right, uh, has a question, raise your hand. Uh, yes, uh, thanks. Uh, just uh, when I'm talking about uh, containers and this XDP approach, uh, can we say that with this approach, we can get better price for performance? Because we do know that using DPDK is quite CPU intensive um, because of its nature. Can we say that for explicit, explicitly container use case, we will get the better price for CPU utilization in ca case of performance or not? Um, I, I think yes, we, yes, yes. So, so think about the cold pass, right? So, so think about the cold pass when you are using DP, obvious DPTK, right? So you basically run much longer, much larger code to go into the user space and come back than doing very, very minimum processing like XDP, just get the packet from the driver immediate, immediately and uh, do something, then just just send, send it to the VE's container. So I guess, it, yeah, yeah. So I'm assuming by price, you mean technical debt uh, cost, not actual price. So we, we kind of don't want to delve into marketing concerns, here. but uh, uh, good answer. But by price, I meant uh, the when you when you have some performance, it always comes with the cost. CPU cycles, number of cores used, or uh, or the total processing power that was that was basically used to to get this performance. And my understanding that with this approach for container uh, use case, we can get it better. So we can utilize CPU uh, better to get uh, more packets, million packets per second. I don't know. Maybe sometimes we will get gigabits on 100, 200. We'll see. Oh yeah, yeah. So so I think one one matrix is to see the performance per corns, right? How many, you achieve this performance, but how many numbers of corns do you come soon? And I guess that's a, what you're talking about, the price, right? So cloud customer today, they care about like, how many corns do I, do I spin to achieve this performance uh, or packet rate? So I guess XDP is way more efficiency in this case, in this particular case. Okay, so looks like I think we went over all the questions. So thank you very much. Uh